he's been on our screens for 35 years. But if you think you know Philip Schofield, think again. Did you know, before TV, he actually wanted to be a gravedigger? Not a farmer when he grew up, <laughs> yeah? He's going to tell us more about that in just a minute, but first, let's take a look back at his time on screen where it's important to expect the unexpected. Oh, yeah! oh! Not to worry about it. OK. We are live. We've just started our very first show and there is a dog loose in the studio. Good morning. Well, of course, that was Barry Manilow. Dame Margot turning in her tutu. Find out more about them later in the show. <laughs> I don't know. Well, they said that stuff like that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? What was that noise? You've never... <laughs> You've never made that noise. <laughs> What was the noise? What did she do? It was something in her throat. She just went, uh -huh. uh -huh. in, her, in her throat. <laughs> and I've uh -huh. never heard it. There it is. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Philip, thank you so much for joining us today. That's and isn't right. it so sad that literally you're through that wall and you can't come and join us, obviously, because of blooming coronavirus I said, and everything why else? Can't, why can't I just sit in front of you on a chair, miles away, like an audience of one? Oh, you know, you're going to sit on my lap, Plav. You're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you're not allowed. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Can I just say, we have loved your book. Thank loved you. Loved your book. You've, you've been so honest, open. Everything that anyone who knows you so well will have hoped to have got from this book, you, will, you get it. Mm. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stroll through your incredible career. And you also, I think, tackle head on in a really beautiful way what you did earlier this year, <clears> which <throat> happened yeah. literally through that wall here within our ITV family. And we, we, we just want to ask, how are you? How well, are okay, you since actually. that fateful day? Well, in the, in the commercial break, <clears throat> I think uh, uh, was one, of the, one of the ladies, Sarah, or was it uh, Linda? I'm not sure. So you look better. You put on a bit of weight. Um, and I have, definitely, <laughs> I have definitely put on a bit of weight. That's yeah. for sure. Um, <clears throat> it was tricky. It was a very difficult... Uh, lead up to uh, to February, but um, you know I think everyone in here was so incredible. We are such a lovely team. Uh, I got a massive amount of support, and I just felt better for that. Um, and so yeah, I mean I'm 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 better, much better. It's a scary thing yeah. though, isn't it? When you've when you've got something big to say, mm. and then you put it out there because yeah. you obviously knew for as long as you knew, and then it's telling the world and sitting back and going, I'm just handing this over to the universe and I don't know how this is going to go. Yeah, but it's all right if you're doing it on your own. If you're doing it just for you, then fair enough. But mm. I had a wider, very, very important group of people around me um, and I knew that, you know, you just don't pull the pin on your own life. You, you know, you pull the pin on everybody else's at the mm. same time. And that was the, uh, the greatest feeling for me, the greatest concern was that, um, that when that happened, that it was as, as dignified as possible, um, that I didn't hurt anyone any more than they'd already been hurt. Um, and that, you know, that, that we're, we're, we're still, the four of us, different but the same. Um, and so I just, that was my greatest concern, remains my greatest concern, really, is that, um, is that I'm, and I, I say in the book, it's like a weird minefield, you know, everywhere I, I walk, if I make a wrong step, I blow somebody else up. Um, and that, you know, that I don't like that. Um, and there is, uh, there is just the feeling of still a work in progress and still, you know, sort of picking my way through. Yeah. Philip, what you've done, you've helped so many people, so many that you probably will never, ever imagine how many people you've helped. So I'm going to say from them, thank you very much for the way that you did it. It was with grace and dignity. And it's a hard thing. I know what it's like to keep a secret from loved ones. I've had to do it for my life because of my religion and my culture. It's not the same thing. But I know how hard it is when you want to say something and you can't. One of the important people in your life and in your book, you talk about how close you are to your mum and dad. How was it say, um, coming out to your mum? What was the reaction and how, how did you build up to that point? Well, it's funny because uh, anyone who knows me, um, uh, and I do explain this in there, is that I have these incredibly annoying floaters in my eyes. Just, it's just a, a, this swirling mess. 
Um, and people don't realise just how debilitating they can be if you have them really severely. Uh, and I've got them very bad. They're completely harmless, but they're just annoying. And I think I've managed to find a route to get them sorted in the new year, which would be quite pioneering and quite good. Anyway, my mum knows about them. And I went to see her in Cornwall uh, and to tell her. <clears throat> and I said, Mum, I've got, I've got something to tell you. She, earlier on, she said, are you OK? You're thin, you look sad all the time. Oh. And I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm OK. She said, are you, are you ill? So I said, no, I'm not ill, Mum, I'm OK. When the time is right, I, 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 I'll, I'll just tell you. Um, anyway, drove down, took a fish and chips, and went in and said, mm. uh, I told, uh, you know, I, I said, I've got something to tell you. And I told her, and she went, oh, thank God for that. I thought you were going blind. <laughs> I said, what? Why the hell would you think I'm going blind? And she said, the thing's in your eyes. So I said, no, it's not that. And she went, oh, well, that's all right then. <laughs> and don't you just love mums love for that? You've got a lot of and, Philip, and, and just to reiterate what, what Cyrus said, you will have helped so many people, you know, with, with our Stand By Your Men campaign uh, here at Loose Women. This is something that, you know, we just want men to know, I know we're a woman's show, but we love you and we support you. I just think it's really, and I've, and I've really stressed this, um, that sometimes your head can get the better of you. Um, and it happens a lot, and it happens to guys who think, you know, I have to be powerful and strong and invincible and, you know, I have to take it all on my shoulders. No, you don't. There is no weakness in saying that you need help. Uh, I sought help professionally before any of this became public. I was seeing, uh, I saw a psychiatrist and it didn't really work for me. I couldn't do the hour uh, and then be out on the street type of thing, thinking, oh my God, your time's up. I had red eyes and it was all blotchy. So I have now have a psychologist um, and that's online at the moment. We haven't been able to meet face-to-face, uh, -face, but it's a little bit open-ended. There's no great rush to it. You just talk, uh, talk through things. Now, I know that that's not available to everybody, but find a mate. Find someone maybe within your family or in, a, in, a, in, a, in the other parts of your family, not maybe your closest if you're too worried about that, but you cannot hold it all in yourself. If you, if you have something you want to talk about, if you have something you need to talk about, your head will get the better of you unless you share it. Philip, yeah. I just want to ask you, we had a little teaser saying that you, when you were smaller, you wanted to be a grave digger. How did that move into a passion of broadcasting? Have they're, you always they're, very that? they're very similar. They're very similar, really. <laughs> so similar. <laughs> After Have you always had grave. that broadcasting gene? Where did that come from? <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Because I... I um, and I go into detail in the, in the book about... When I, was, um, when I was younger, my brother used to have... Uh, a big Lego set, and I, but I used to tip a cardboard box on the on the side and build the top of the pop studio in the cardboard box. And I had Lego cameras. I knew I found out how to build really realistic Lego cameras and sets and the boom mics and all that sort of stuff. So I used to do that constantly. Um, my favourite book was the Lady Bird Book of Television, and I studied it. Inside it had a map of this building that we are in right now. How bizarre is that, that I should be back in the building yeah. that was on the front cover of the Lady, Bo the Lady Bird Book of Television? So I don't know where it came from, but, yeah. the, but what was lovely was that anyone I told in the family, my mum, my dad, uh, through school, my careers officer, who was a guy called Bruce Connock, none of them said, well, that's stupid, you can't do that. Everyone tried to facilitate my dream, which is, you know, why I end up sitting in this amazing building now. And do I guess any dream will do, won't it? Oh, I see what you did there, <laughs> well Brenda done. Edward. Well done. Oh, do you know, and you, Brenda, you've just reminded me, we don't, we've, we've run out of time, we don't have time to go through your incredible career, the fact that it all started off in New Zealand, people don't know that about you, um, you know, the theatre work that you've done, it's, it's all really beautifully... Cr chronologically. No, perfect. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put in here. And I love the idea that you just sat down with a laptop and just wrote. And just wrote. Um, we're gonna you're going to have to come on again. Luckily, you're just yeah. next door. Yeah. So well, we can do really this again. You've put on a bit of weight and it suits you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Linda. You're yeah. welcome. You got off lightly with Linda. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did all right. <laughs>